Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Nicholas Yan, RSI 23, and I'm from Farragut High School, Knoxville, Tennessee. So. All right, so as you've seen from the AI panel today, AI is obviously a very big topic. So it can seem overwhelming at times because we've seen stuff like Alpha Zero, where AI can beat even the, the best human players in Go, and Stockfish can compete with the best human players in chess. But I wanted to look at AI from a different angle. Can AI make music better than or as good as humans? So now let's talk a little about, a bit about my background. So um, I learned to play the piano when I was four, and then in fifth grade I learned to play the cello, and now for the past four years I've been self-teaching myself how to produce music on GarageBand. And so the music I've been making is rhythm game music. And so we're going to be using a specific AI jukebox to make this rhythm game music. So I'm going to go over to the computer for a second because I have a test for you all. For the sake of time, I'm only going to play the first two. But for each one of them, I want you to think about whether a human made it or an AI made it. So here's the first one. And here's the second one. Okay, time's up. So for I, I want all of you to raise your hand if you think the first one was made by AI. Okay, and raise your hand if you think the second one was made by AI. So I guess there's like about a two-thirds, one-third split. If you pick the first one, you are right. The first one was made by AI. So I want you to think to yourself, why do you think this one was made by AI? And because we're going to be talking about that later in the results. But if we totally guessed, it's okay, right? <laughs> that's, st that's still okay. Just maybe let it marinate for a bit. So here's an overview of Jukebox's data set. So it's been trained on data from 1.2 million songs. And here in this map, this is sort of, uh, sort of like a map of um, the genres and the different artists that Jukebox has been trained on. So we have like hip hop and rock and classical in these different groups. And it shows how these different genres are related to one another. But notice how rhythm game music is not part of this graph. So after reading literature, I noticed that this genre is relatively new, so I wanted to find out if rhythm game music were to be added to this graph, would it be in its own island, or would it be somewhere closer to one of these existing islands over here? So now you might be asking yourself, what is rhythm game music? So rhythm games are a type of action video game that challenges a player's sense of rhythm by having them play a simulated instrument. Now that could be anywhere from your keyboard to your mobile screen, or in the case of Guitar Hero, the player has an external controller. So these songs are each accompanied by their own level. And because these players want to have challenging levels, these songs are typically going to be faster and more upbeat than other genres of music. And they're also, because of the recency, there's a heavy emphasis on electronic elements. This is another important point that I'm going to touch on later. So next, we're going to be talking about Jukebox. So Jukebox is an open source, commercially available, variant audio encoder developed by OpenAI. And so what this means is that it's going to take this audio file here and turn it into a simpler representation as shown by these different colored rectangles. And so the variant means that this output is continuous. The different colors of these boxes can change, which makes it easy for Jukebox to generate uh, exciting and new creative outputs. And notice how there's also three levels here. So the top level is only going to capture the most important musical information, such as the overall structure of a song. The middle layer might capture finer details, like the melody. And finally, the last layer will capture the finest details, like the individual timbres of the instruments used in the original sample. And so what this means is that we can use Jukebox to extend pre-existing rhythm game songs.
which is also the question we're going to be asking ourselves today. How accurately can Jukebox replicate these melodies from rhythm game music? Before we do that, we have to define what accuracy is. So first, differentiation. Can humans tell apart human and AI-generated music? So if the accuracy is closer to 50%, that means they're basically guessing whether something was made by a human or AI, which means that the AI accurately can recreate this type of music. And second of all, we have musicality. If we asked people to rate this music from one to five, a higher rating for the AI would mean that it was more accurate in generating this type of music because people like it more. But first, let's generate the data. So I selected 16 arrangements of rhythm game songs. Now, I couldn't get the original MIDI data for copyright reasons, so I used the next best thing, which was finding popular arrangements on YouTube that accurately represented the song. And so next, I extracted the MP3s from the song and fed them into Jukebox via a Google Colab notebook over here. So I know this might be a bit hard to see, but you can see several parameters that we can edit here, such as the genre. I set the genre to classical in hopes of having the AI generate uh, more creative melodic ideas, and I set the artist blank because I didn't want it to be influenced by any specific person's style. And now that we have the 16 audio files, I picked randomly picked the human part or the AI part and then put these 16 uh, excerpts in a survey to a local youth orchestra. So it's sort of like asking you guys, the audience, to determine whether, that piece, whether an excerpt was made by a human or an AI. And so now let's see how you compared with the orchestra members. So these are the most common adjectives that people use to describe the human and AI generated music. Almost unanimously, people liked the human-generated music more because it had structure. Most notably, if you listen to the AI-generated one, most of you might be thinking that uh, the AI sort of lost its train of thought the longer the piece progressed, which was a common sentiment among the respondents. Second of all, your accuracy was sort of similar to the respondents. They had about a two-thirds chance of determining correctly whether something was made by a human or AI. And as for the reasons why, I want you to think about it again, because I'm going to bring up some possible explanations for why that might be the case. And most importantly, the good news is that humans prefer human-generated music significantly more than AI music, which is good, because I won't be out of a job later. So, Not yet. <laughs> yet. So what does this mean? So humans could tell the uh, different excerpts apart, because you will notice that the AI music sounded fuzzier, right? So that was one thing that gave it away. But also, some human excerpts with unusual uh, chord progressions might have been perceived as AI. So there was sort of error from both directions here. Next, humans preferred human-generated melodies. And that's sort of maybe because of differences in how humans and AI learn to compose, which if you have any questions about that, I might be able to elaborate it because I'm running short on time. So Jukebox can somewhat replicate these melodies from this new genre of music. And so what is next? So first of all, Jukebox isn't trained on this genre of music, so it doesn't know what instruments to expect. For stuff like rock, for example, it expects stuff like the drums, bass, guitar, and piano, which means that it's been listened to so many songs that it can recreate them with a higher accuracy as compared to rhythm game music, where they're unpredicted where there are an unpredictable amount of instruments. And now, as people can do sound design and create new sounds, it further decreases the accuracy of the output, which leads to the major problem here. Transcribing the electronic music itself is difficult. Okay, do I, can I still have like a minute to like finish this slide? Yeah, so electronic music is layered, so it's hard for the AI to separate these different instruments into their individual components. And secondly, not all sounds can be converted to MIDI whether that's percussion or white noise, you can't really represent that on a piano roll, or you'll just get a bunch of noise, as you can see here. And so, again, this is just an example of how complex electronic music composition can get from one of my songs. But overall, I'm going to take a page out of the Nobel Laureate's book, as in the ultimate goal is to have AI as a creative co-pilot, where it can enhance the creativity of the user 
and help them bring out their fullest creative potential. And yeah, here are my references. Is okay. the model generating waveform data or MIDI data? Uh, this was one point I couldn't bring up due to time, but Jukebox takes in waveform data, MP3. And then it spits out waveform yeah. data? Yeah, MP3 and MP3 out. Okay. Yeah. So something I noticed is the two samples that you put out there at the end was like the human generated one had very natural like patterns and chord progression, so that were really yes. good. And the AI was really good. Yes. Is that something that like AI is capable of doing in general, or is it just I think it's just the thing about AI is that it learns from a vacuum. AI doesn't know what note names are. It doesn't know what a piano sounds like. And so it, its understanding is sort of influenced by the training data that it receives. So I guess it tried its best to copy what other rhythm game music sounded like, but it just didn't get it quite right. Because again, just with the uncanny valley thing, humans are like really suspicious of things that are like almost human but aren't. So that's what I think happened there. I'm gonna go to. You. I'm gonna go to you first. It seemed like the um, AI was picking up on some jazz discordancy and, and adding that in as kind of a a, a way to, to further the narrative along, and that was interesting. But discordant. So. Yeah, because I feel like the composer of this excerpt, I know that uh, he is classically trained, and he has been using like more like non-traditional like harmonic ideas in some of his works. So maybe the AI just tried to copy that. Do you think that AI could be trained to distinguish between AI-generated and human-generated music? Um, from what I can tell, OK, so that's a good question. So I know when it applies to images, AI that is trained on AI-generated images will quickly devolve. So I'm not sure whether the same thing will happen to music. Yes? Uh, that is actually one of the features of Jukebox where you can give it certain like style parameters. Like you can, like, can I go back for a second? Yeah, so in this, uh, in the notebook, there is an option that's like select artist and select genre. And there was, there's like a list of genres like rock, classical, or pop that you can put the parameter into and it's going to use its knowledge from those songs in the training database and actually make something original. But that was not the focus of this research because rhythm game music simply was not an option. So I did the best with what I had. Yeah. Uh, are, are, with your experience, are you able to routinely tell the difference between the AI and the human music? I think I've gotten pretty good at telling the difference, especially because I had to like listen back to all of the all of the samples that were produced. And what would you describe as the difference, the important differences? I guess AI music just sounds quote unquote off in a way. Other than other than the fact that like AI doesn't use natural chord progressions the way that humans think about. Is I think the big thing is that AI and humans learn to compose in like fundamentally different ways. And that's something that I would like to explore in the future. I can't exactly articulate it right now.